up till now, almost all the attention has been based on BP. Um, that's convenient for American politicians probably to blame a foreign oil company for being at the centre of this disaster. But there's been most people in, in the industry have accepted that um, this probably was quite widespread, the fault here. And the BP report, which is 200 pages and very thorough, certainly does um, blame companies like Transocean, which owned the rig, um, Halliburton, which did the cementing on the well, and suggest the blowout preventer owned by camera and those are three american companies interestingly they are very clearly looking to spread the blame now that might be the truth of the situation um, that will come out in the future but uh, the point of the report is that they are saying that and i can quote here a sequence of failures involving a number of different parties led to the explosion and fire which killed 11 people very early on uh, Tony Hayward suggested that the rig was actually owned by Transocean and they had a responsibility for the well and that went down very well, uh, very badly, sorry. It was seen as BP trying to um, completely shift all the blame off. I think now um, they've done a, a good job in shifting some of the blame to other companies but it doesn't um, in any way absolve uh, BP. They make quite clear that they made mistakes too. One of the things that BP would be very conscious about when they were writing this report uh, was their legal liability. Now, if they were found to be grossly negligent, which they haven't, but if they were, then the penalties would be absolutely titanic and they've already taken a hit to the tune of $25 billion. Um, and one of the things that struck me just immediately about the executive summary is that out of four and a half pages, the first page is entirely given to disclaimers. So I think that was very conscious in their mind as well. It also, in the minds of a, an independent um, assessor, suggests that there's a whole range of problems that were introduced into that well by these companies. And these are the absolute blue ship companies in the industry. Um, companies like Halliburton are one of the biggest services company in the world. Dick Cheney from uh, the former US Vice President used to be head of it. Transocean is the biggest rig operator in the world. It's operating in the North Sea now. And it's very disturbing to find that at the very top of the industry, there's a lot of shoddy practice and, and one shudders to think what's happening um, further down the food chain. And frankly, reading through it, it's quite a scary picture. Right from the very start when the cement, which I think Halliburton were responsible for, which was supposed to stop oil getting into the pipe and up through the riser, that didn't work. Then they uh, did a pressure test to see whether they had control of the well. The report says that they failed to interpret that properly and sort of fudges the blame between the Transocean crew and the BP leaders on the rig. They could have diverted the oil and gas that was coming up, unbeknownst to them, it took them 40 minutes to realise that was happening. They could have diverted that overboard, as they say, into the ocean. Instead, it came on board the rig. So suddenly you had all this oil and gas pouring round the rig. Another thing that then went wrong was that gas and uh, oil escape from safe areas where they control sparks into areas where they don't, and that's presumably uh, what led to the fire. And then lastly, at this point, they're looking to shut off the well. It turns out the blowout preventer in one control pod had flat batteries. There was another control pod in which a so-called solenoid valve wasn't working. It's also disturbing to find at the back of the report that BP says that it hasn't been able to fulfil the job that it set out to do to the best possible um, advantage for everyone because it still hasn't been able to look at some of the equipment, the blowout preventer which was at the very heart of this um, problem that um, was designed by Cameron. It hasn't been able to get hold of that blowout preventer and it suggests that Cameron hasn't even allowed it access to any of its blowout preventers which suggests there's, um, there's a lot of conflict between the companies. It also, BP, points out that it also hasn't been able to look at some of the cement that Halliburton was using, which suggests that Halliburton too is being unhelpful. It's a pretty terrifying picture for an industry that was supposed to be, or, or for a, you know, a drilling operation that was supposed to be fail safe. It had so many layers of safety, nothing could go wrong. Well, it looks like everything went wrong.